Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here and welcome to Tarot Ante Haul number 11. I literally feel like it's been a bazillion years since I've sat here and filmed an Auntie haul and I don't think it's actually been that long, but it feels like it's been that long. <laughs> if you're new to my Auntie hauls, let me just give you the rundown. So these videos are videos I like to make where I talk about all the things I'm not gonna buy, Kickstarters I didn't back, and occasionally some deck purchases I may regret. Along with telling you guys what I don't like or what I'm not gonna buy, I like to tell you guys what from my collection, the things that I already own that I feel like sort of scratch the itch or fill that niche for me or satisfy whatever urge it is that that particular deck is bringing up in me. Sometimes it's comparing a similar style of deck. Sometimes it's a deck that I think I would use in a similar way from my own collection. And this is just a really great way for me to make sure that I only bring in those things I think I'm actually going to use. So this is me sort of sharing with you the tail end of that process where I have figured out what it is that I'm probably not going to buy. I say probably because I'm human and I definitely many a time have said I've decided not to buy this thing and then later on down the road something has shifted, my perception has shifted, or I've had an opportunity to check one out and I've brought in a deck that I've anti-hauled. I do want to make a video sharing all of those sort of the things I've anti-hauled that I've caved on, that's coming at some point when I can get off my butt and actually get it filmed, uh, but it does happen. So just keep in mind that these things are always subject to change. My tastes are subject to change. Circumstances are subject to change and all that good stuff. Um, a few disclaimers, that was one of them, <laughs> about this series. Uh, I do like to keep it kind here. I'm really um, a big fan of the creators that put their work out into the world. And even if it is work that I don't personally resonate with or I don't think that I can use, I really just wanna stress here that tarot and oracle decks are primarily primarily about art. Um, yes, there's usually a theme to go along with that and messages and there's other factors, but for me the core of it really is the artwork, the way that the ideas or the concepts in those cards are expressed artistically. And because the art plays such a huge role in how I particularly perceive a deck, oftentimes that's entirely subjective. Everything is subjective when it comes to tarot and oracle decks, in my opinion. There are, there's cardstock things that are subjective. There's art things that are personal taste and totally subjective. Um, there's other production quality things or types of guidebooks or other things that I look for in a deck that other people might not. So um, just a gentle reminder that if these, if I anti-haul things that you love, please keep loving them. Uh, these are just my personal sort of takes on the things that I've decided that I probably don't need to bring into my personal collection. So that's basically in a nutshell. So please keep it kind in the comments. You guys always do about creators and I genuinely appreciate that because it's just it's how I like it here. So with that said, let's get into our first category, which is usually actually decks that I regret purchasing, I racked my brain this month and I could not think of any decks I've brought in in the last couple of months that I have purchased for myself that I regret or that I wish I had waited on. As of this moment, there's not really anything I can think of that I would want to share in this category. So I, so I didn't. <laughs> Let's talk about mass market decks I'm not gonna buy. And I try to feature things here that I did at least consider buying, sometimes really hard consider buying before I eventually talk myself out of them. The first one of these that I wanna talk about are the new er <laughs> version of the Making Magic Oracle deck by Priestess Moon. <sighs> I have sat on the fence on this particular deck for a long, long time. I've thought about it, I've thought about it, I've thought about it some more. I love that this deck is round. I love that it has these beautiful sigils on it. I love that the size of it makes it really great for magical work. I have a lot of things that I could think about like putting this down and then putting a candle on top of them. I feel like there's so many ways to use these cards. The reason that I just haven't been able to bring myself to actually press the buy button is because as many of you know, I have the Making Magic Oracle deck, the, the mini deck. I freaking love this little mini deck and I use it all the time. So I love, 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 love using this in my client readings. And believe it or not, what I think I realized is that as much as I was intrigued by the new larger size, it's this smaller, more portable size that I find so infinitely usable about this deck. I can pull out a card for safe and happy travel, for example, and tuck it into my wallet when I'm 
traveling. Um, these are the perfect size to still put underneath candles and in like tuck them into sachets if I'm doing a working. They've held up really well. I have melted candle wax onto them and wiped them off. The big ones I think would be just as good, but I'm so, I've, I found so many different ways to use this little mini deck that I just can't justify the spend. This one w sits out on my altar pretty much at all times on my reading table. Again, I use these for clients. I just, I really love this little mini deck from my own collection. So I don't feel like I need another copy even though it is in a larger, nicer size, I guess, in a way. The other thing I will say is that I really do like that the little messages are on these cards. So they have what that card stands for. So that you can see it and read it as you're working with the card. And I think I would miss that on the larger version. But I have to admit that I, I went completely gaga when I found out that this deck was going into a larger size with those full, big, beautiful round cards. And if you don't already have the mini deck or if you know you're gonna be working with the deck more magically, not wanting to take the deck for travel or anything like that, then those big ones might be the exact right thing for you in your practice. I just, I talked myself out of it because I knew I didn't, I didn't strictly need it and I felt like it'd be wasteful to get another copy when I use this one so, so much. So that's why I talked myself out of the Making Magic Bigger Cards by Priestess Moon. I do also think there was a slight difference in the number of cards. I, the little mini deck has 40 cards and I think, don't quote me on this, I'll have to double check, but I think that the full size deck has less, like maybe has 36 or something. And I, I love all of the ones that are included in here. So I'd have to see a side by side to, to know which ones are missing and to know if that would matter to me, but I feel like it, it would. So yeah, that one I decided to pass on. All right, so the next mass market deck I decided that I wasn't going to buy is the, what's it called? The Magic of Unicorns Oracle deck by Diana Cooper. In any case, I, was really excited about this. I'm always excited to find out about a new unicorn deck coming out. I think I've discovered that I am, I don't think this is new. I don't think this is a new discovery, but I think I understand about myself kind of finally now that I am incredibly picky about unicorn decks because I love unicorns so much. And so few of them seem to actually land for me the way that I want them to land. And that's really hard to describe because I love me a cute, cutesy fluffy deck and I love when unicorns have that sort of fluffy appearance but I also love them when they're super serious but I don't want them to be too serious and I don't want them to be too fluffy and I don't want them to remind me of like early like mid 90s oracle decks and I don't want them to remind me of like fantasy RPG art it's like I'm, I'm very like I know what I mean when I talk about it but I don't know how to translate that into a proper description visually but anyway I was very very excited about this deck to come out I didn't couldn't find a single preview image at all from this deck, no matter how hard I searched. And I was committed. I was like, I'm going to buy this deck because it was due to release on my actual birthday. And I was like, it's fate. It's kismet. I'm definitely meant to have this deck. It's a unicorn deck. It's releasing on my birthday. Like what could be better? But I just kept holding back because I just didn't trust that I would like it. And I remember a few days before the deck released, even going so far as to look up some other decks by this same uh, creator, Diana Cooper. And I didn't feel that I liked any of the other ones by her that I'd found. So I was like, ooh, there's a really good chance. I don't know, this one's probably not gonna be for me. And then finally it came out, I managed to hold off, came out around my birthday, I saw some photos and I was like, no, it's too, it feels very young in the ways that I don't like. There's like, there's like go really, really young, like My Little Pony or like go all the way grown up and like nowhere in between. I think that was the issue for me. It was like somewhere in between all of that. So I, I, I couldn't do it. But what I do love for my own collection is my tried and true, uh, I think it's just called Oracle of the Unicorns or the Unicorn Oracle. Um, and this one is so great. I, the funny thing about this is in theory, I should not like this deck because this deck is actually made up of a huge selection of art from different artists. In fact, I don't, I believe a lot of these artists, I've seen their art elsewhere out in the wild. They're, it's not exclusive to this deck. Maybe some of the art is, but I don't think so. Maybe it's the fact that there is such a variety of art in this deck, and that's maybe one of the reasons I like it. Maybe one of the reasons that I like it is that it's so super glossy, and I still remember that sort of giddy feeling I got when I first picked up this deck in person and started flipping through a sample copy of it, because it reminded me of like photographs of unicorns. The gloss on it just made it feel somehow more real to me. I, I don't know how else to describe that besides to say that it's just really pretty. I love the keywords on the deck. I love the little um, sub keywords or subtitles or, or messages underneath the keywords on this deck. This deck just, it just, 
it's the one for me for unicorn decks. I also really love the Northern Lights backings on these cards. And I did actually back this deck in really pretty colors that match the backing. And I just, this one scratches the itch for me. And I, I think it's gonna be a while before I find another Oracle, unicorn based Oracle deck that, that does it. I've looked at Paolo Barbieri's one. I think I've anti-hauled that one in the past. That whole thing about like being a unicorn, but not a unicorn. That whole theme of that deck also kind of just didn't land for me, but yeah. Anyways, I've belabored that one enough, but I just, I really like the one I have. I really like the one I have, so I'm not, I'm not going to get this new one. And <clears throat> it did look, it did remind me quite a bit of those like mid nineties, early 2000 Oracle decks. And I don't know what I even mean by that. I guess if you kind of know, if you know what Oracle decks were like back then, maybe you know, but it, I feel like I'm not drawn to Oracle decks that have that vibe 99% of the time. There are some exceptions, but 99% of the time, not for me. Um, <clears throat> This third mass market deck that I wanted to mention that I'm not going to buy, this one really guts me because I was convinced I was going to pre-order this. I watched live streams with the creators. I fully support the work of both of the creators of this deck, both just fantastic creators who are very knowledgeable. I'm, I was really excited to get this. And, and maybe that's one of the reasons I'm so glad I can talk about it here so that I can share with you guys how amazing I think this deck is. And the, the reason I'm not getting it isn't because I don't want it, because I still want it. The main reason I'm getting it is because I know I don't have time to learn a new system right now. And I have Thoth, uh, the Thoth Tarot system, as my next to study. And that's behind Geomancy because it got bumped because I've been playing with Geomancy and that's a whole thing. But I just, I don't have time to learn another cardomantic system right now. I think it would be relatively quick and easy to learn. I just know my plate is already full. And if I if I get it right now, it's gonna sit on a shelf and be ignored until I have chance to kind of get to know it and learn it. I, and it guts me because I want it so bad. I, I want it so bad, but I just don't, I just, it's gonna collect dust. I have too many other things I'm working on. I've had too many other projects on the go and I just know I'm not gonna be able to give it the time. So I'm, I'm, I'm I would more say I'm waiting than I've decided firmly that I'm not going to purchase it. If I'm going to purchase any Kipper deck, I really want this one to be my first one. I love that it kind of has that play on Stephen Bright's silhouette deck, uh, Spirit. I will link it down below because I'm spacing on the name right now, but um, I've always kind of low-key wanted that deck, but still have not picked that one up. That's one of those ones that kind of gets, oh, it's always sitting on my wish list, but I just never managed to pull the trigger on it, but I do legitimately still want it. But it kind of pulls in that art style and both of their knowledge about the Kipper system. And Tony Poole is very knowledgeable about Kipper. If you've ever had a chance to watch her channel, um, she's the card geek or go to any of her like live classes or, or seminars or her, she does World Divination Association like online conferences. If you've ever gone any of her stuff, she's knowledgeable, she's super fun. I wanna buy this so bad. <laughs> I'm just talking myself into it. I'm not even getting to the point, but I just, I know I don't have time to study it. That's basically the point. What scratches my itch instead? This is totally a cheat because it doesn't even really technically count because I have not one Kipper deck in my collection, but I do have so many beautiful Le Normand decks. I have so many that I love and adore. And, and I feel like if I were to compare Kipper to any other system, I feel like Lenormand is the closest. But even then, I've got so many gorgeous, gorgeous Lenormand decks to play with. And that is the cardamantic system that if I'm going to stray outside of tarot or oracle decks, that is always my go-to. I've already learned it. I've already spent a lot of time getting to know it and getting comfortable with it. And even still, I don't feel like I know it well enough yet to feel like it's something that, like I just know backwards and forwards like the palm of my hand. I think I feel like I know it well, I have a good working knowledge, but I've got more to go there too. So adding a whole nother system, it just, it feels really daunting and kind of mildly irresponsible for me personally, just based on what's going on in my life right now. But look at all my beautiful or like Lenormand decks. Like they're, how could I, how could I betray them? No, that's not, so not true. I wouldn't be betraying them. But yeah, I just don't have time to learn another system. And I guess that's basically, that's basically the punchline, but man, I want this so bad. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not really saying that I'm never gonna buy it. Just, I can't right now. So I'm anti-hauling it for now because that's the responsible grown-up thing to do. And by golly, I can be a grown-up every once in a while. Just every once in a while. It happens sometimes. <sighs> so that's it for mass market decks. I've for sure decided that I'm not going to buy, at least for now. Let's talk now about some indie decks that I'm not gonna buy. 
Again, lately with these anti hauls, I've taken to torturing myself. I think because I don't like to necessarily roast a deck that I, I knew I never wanted. I've done that sometimes in these anti hauls, but most of the time I like to just talk about decks that I really kind of want or wanted, but I've decided I don't need them or it's not right for me right now. And I mean, need is such a weird word, right? Nobody needs, nobody needs more than one tarot deck. We've heard this before. Um, but lots of us want, lots of us want all the things. I would love a dragon horde pile of tarot decks. But on the other hand, I've talked before about how I can get overwhelmed. When my collection starts to get past a certain point, I start to get overwhelmed. And right now my collection is in this like really beautiful space where I'm looking as I'm filming me right now, you can see my, my eyes wandering because I've got all of these beautiful tarot wall racks where I hang all of my bags and my decks and like there's space on them and nothing's too cluttered or, or crowded. And it's like, it's perfection right now. And I just don't, I don't like it when it gets much busier than it is right now. So that's part of it too, is also thinking about is, is this thing that I'm gonna bring in, is it something I'm gonna like more than something I have right now, which is why I structured these videos the way that I do, because I wanna think about like, am I going to like this more than something that I could be just playing with more that I already have? I just repeated myself, but I hopefully you get the point. So indie decks, the first one I wanna talk about is the North Atlantic Tarot. I've talked about this a bunch of times and I think it was actually Sarah at Sunset Bow Tarot uh, on YouTube. I'll try to remember to have a link to her channel down below, but she is Sunset Bow Tarot. Her channel's amazing. I love her perspective on decks. She, I think, was the one who told me that this deck, which I thought was actually out of print, is available on makeplayingcards.com. Now, if you don't know, Make Playing Cards is a self-publishing platform where you can literally, any person can go on and upload art and print out their own tarot deck. Some small indie publishers will actually publish their decks through Make Playing Cards and then sell them either themselves or through the marketplace on Make Playing Cards. And this is a deck that I think used to be available in a different format. And this is something else I've seen happen is sometimes creators, when they're not, they're at a point where they don't want to do another big run of say 500 or a thousand of their deck, they might put it up on make playing cards so it can still be made available, but then it's print on demand. That's basically what make playing cards does is they print on demand. So you can actually find some pretty cool stuff in the marketplace if you just go clicking around and browsing. Definitely a good time suck. If you're the type of person that like goes to Pinterest or Instagram and like scrolls, for something to do, just go scroll over on Make Playing Cards or Game Crafter, that's another site that's similar. Anyway, uh, I'm pretty sure it was Sarah that told me that the Terror of the North Atlantic was on Make Playing Cards and I started looking at it all over again. Now, the thing about this deck that gets me every single time is the texture. It's an ocean themed deck, but it's got so much gorgeous texture. Like not the kind of texture you can feel, but definitely the kind of texture you can see. There's definitely a lot of layered kind of physical collage done as part of creating this deck. And I really love that look and feel. It's something that I get a lot out of uh, particular decks. And I, I love that texture. In fact, I was recently comparing that to, I believe the Enchanted Tarot, which is an oldie but a goodie that has lots of that fabric-y kind of texture. I also have the Textured Tarot, um, but those decks are great, but they didn't really scratch the itch for this because this has that ocean theme, which has always like drawn me in. But, and I don't have it to physically show you guys, but I did just recently in the past few months back two different ocean themed decks. <laughs> so I backed the Healing Waves Tarot, which I'm very sorry if you missed this on Indiegogo, I'm pretty sure it's done. Like I don't think this is one that you can buy after the Indiegogo, like I don't think you can buy it now. Um, I think you had an opportunity to back it when it was on Indiegogo and now it's 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 done. Um, but that one is gorgeous. I was able to get a small prototype um, mini deck like with just a sampling of the cards from the creator and I did a video on that which I will try to remember to link somewhere in the cards and in the description. Um, this deck won my heart over. I am in love with this deck and we should be getting it very, very soon. So I'm really excited to get my hands on that one. That one I think is probably going to be my quintessential ocean deck. Uh, and because I'm, I'm weak, <laughs> I'm a weak willed person. I also backed the ocean tarot by Taylor. I forget her last name, but that was recently on Kickstarter. I will link that as well somewhere below. Uh, that deck and the Healing Waves Tarot came out very close together. Uh, Healing Waves was on Indiegogo and the Ocean Deck was on Kickstarter. The art style is very, very different. Uh, and I feel like the Ocean Tarot has like a darker, more heavy feel in a way. We'll see once I get them in hand. They're both beautiful. In theory, I didn't even need both of those. And I, I probably should have waited on the Ocean Tarot if I'm being completely honest. But 
I, it's been a long time since I've seen an ocean themed tarot deck even come out and I just couldn't sleep on them. I'm such an ocean person and I just, I just need to have them both in my hands to, to find out. Hopefully they'll both have a place in my collection, but if not, I'll keep one and I'll, I will declutter the other down the road. That's how it will go. Sometimes I don't know till I have them in hand. I'm totally babbling, but let's just say I've already just backed two ocean themed decks and I just can't, I want to go for this North Atlantic tarot, but I know it, again, it's just not responsible for me because I've got two other ocean decks coming in as it is, which is already like probably one too many. So I just need to sit for a bit, let the new stuff come in, get to know it, and then decide maybe later down the road if the North Atlantic tarot is still available, see then if I still want it. So that's kind of my, my process with that one. <laughs> wow, I have a lot to say today. I hope you guys are comfy and you have a beverage and a snack and a comfy blanket because we're probably gonna be here for a little while. Um, actually, I guess I'm cruising. I'm about half-ish way in. Anyway, all right, so another one that I was recently looking at and seriously considering is the Seventh Sphere Rider Waite Smith deck. Now, Labyrinthos or, uh, has created Seventh Sphere decks before, but it was a Marseille style. These decks are beautiful. They are beautiful. The color, the color themes are like right up my alley. They're all these pastel blues and purples and pinks and they're stunning. The Marseille one I thought about for a long, long time. I've also heard that their decks are printed on plastic cardstock. Please check that for yourself before you purchase. Don't go on my word alone. But I, that was one of the things I remember being a bit of a draw to these decks. <sighs> And I was this close, y'all. I was so close to finally pulling the trigger on one of these because uh, I've wanted one for a very long time. I just, I was pretty sure I wanted to wait for the Rider Waite. I knew they were working on a Rider Waite clone version of their deck. Um, I, I hope I said that right. A Rider Waite clone in their style. I was waiting for it to come out because I knew it was gonna, gonna be coming out. And I was so close to pressing the buy button, but... <laughs> This is another one where I don't have another physical deck to show you because this was another one where I recently totally impulsed back to Kickstarter called the Dream Vision Tarot. I'll put pictures up. This one is, I feel like this was a deck I didn't know I was already waiting for. Like the, the art style is kind of, it, it reminds me a lot of the Labyrinthos art style. It's kind of futury. It's got lots of blues and purples. More than that though, the Dream Vision Tarot has that extra something, that extra bit of like abstract, that extra bit of like straying from the traditional Rider Waite Smith just a bit. That um, gorgeous colorway, a little bit more bold than the Labyrinthos. And this is the deck I feel like I've been waiting for ever since Mystic Mondays Tarot came out. But if you've seen the, um, if you've seen the Mystic Mondays Tarot, that one had a bunch of production quality issues and there were some other things It just, it wasn't the right one for me. But this Dream Vision Tarot feels like what I wanted Mystic Mondays to be. That probably sounds terrible to whoever created the Mystic Mondays Tarot, I'm very sorry. But like, that's just what it feels like to me personally. That's my interpretation of the artwork. It's like the Dream Vision Tarot is closer to what I think I wanted when I looked at the Mystic Mondays Tarot. And somehow this style kind of scratched off Labyrinthos off my list or the um, Seventh Sphere Rider Waite Smith Tarot off my list. But the Labyrinthos decks, and Labyrinthos is the company or the website name, I believe. The Seventh Sphere uh, Marseille, the Seventh Sphere Rider Waite, and I believe they also have a Seventh Sphere Lenormand. They're all beautiful. And there is an appeal to having a plastic cardstock deck. I, I tell myself it would be lovely to have a waterproof deck if I wanted to, I don't know, read in the pool or the rain or like in the bathtub, but I never do any of those things. <laughs> like even when I could have, I haven't. So I feel like I don't need a plastic cardstock deck. I kind of want at least one in my collection at some point, just to have one that, that I will, that I know I'll want to reach for because the card, if the cardstock feeling is so unique and different and cool, but that's just like a weird Pokemon gotta catch them all moment for me. It's not like I need plastic for some reason. There's not a practical reason. I don't read at bars. I don't have a reason to like be worried about people spilling things on my cards most of the time. And I have enough decks that like, let's be honest, I would be sad if one of my decks got water damaged, but like I would also survive clearly because I have a bazillion decks. So that's not a good enough reason to want the deck, but yeah, I talked myself out of it. That's a lot of words to say I talked myself out of that one. <laughs> Uh, next up, okay, this one has come up again and again and again. It is a really, really awesome, awesome deck. And it is the Living Altar deck. It's not a tarot deck. I don't think it's even really truly an oracle deck. I see it more of like literally what it says it is. Like it's what you see on the label. It's like a living altar. It's a, uh, a deck that you can use as altar cards that you can work with magically. There is a potency and an intensity to the art style to this deck that I think is really cool. And I feel like, I could be remembering wrong, but I feel like I've been asked about this deck multiple times. 
And I have thought about it multiple times. And it's just one of those things that I've just never, something about it aesthetically wasn't quite taking off my boxes. There was some reason I wasn't really drawn to it. And I can't remember when I first discovered that I already had a deck in my collection that when I want to like create an altar without candles, without altar tools, without incense, without any of that other stuff, I have the perfect deck for that already. And it is my Angels and Ancestors Oracle deck. Um, so I'm gonna share with you in the cutaway video here what I mean, because I feel like there is such a wonderful mix of cards in this deck that works so good as a stand-in altar. And I have at least one video on the channel. I'm trying to remember if I have more than one, but I have at least one video on the channel where I actually have done that, where I've pulled out specific cards. I know I've pulled out the elemental guardians to sort of create a circular space. I feel like I've also worked with the guardian angel card, the protection guardian card. I've worked with a bunch of the cards in this deck. There's also seasonal cards if you needed that seasonal representation on your altar. Um, there's a lot of, this is a very versatile deck and it's one that has gotten a ton of use in my collection because I use this deck regularly for my past life client readings. And it is like the perfect thing for me. But when I want cards that can stand in for an altar space for me, this is the deck. To the point where if I was traveling and I wanted to be able to have the ability to have visual representations on an altar space while I was traveling, this is hands down the deck that I would grab. And realizing that made me realize that this was, I guess, the reason why I felt like I wanted the living altar was to have that tool, that, that that deck that I could grab and take with me or create an altar for, have visual representations of altar elements. But I feel like the kind of altar elements or representations I would want, such as of um, God and goddess or of um, the elements or the seasons, I have all of that in my angels and ancestors. So I don't need another deck like this. And as it is, to be honest, I don't use this deck that way very often. So I know my need for a deck like that isn't great. It's not like I would be reaching for this all of the time. And I'll be the first to admit that I have several places and several card stands and places where I put cards on display, whether it is to put up the moon phase or to do some draws for myself that I keep up and around in my space. And I am terrible at remembering to actually like change them out. <laughs> like I just know this about myself. So if I were to get like the living altar and like put the the Samhain card up or the spring card up, I can't remember how it's structured. But if I was to put the cards up that were specifically representative of the season or something I'm working with, I know I'd probably forget to change them. So I know I'm not gonna use them that way. So this one was, I think, kind of an easy one to talk myself out of because I knew I didn't really need it. And I have something that could fit the bill should I find myself wanting to use them in a practice in that way. So I'm good, I'm good on that one. All right, so that takes care of everything that is currently out on the market as of the time I'm filming this video. Let me talk now about a few things that I've decided I'm not going to pre-order. And I should caveat this by saying that I'm not, I haven't been doing a lot of pre-ordering lately. I don't feel the need to be first in line for decks. I don't feel like, I, I am very, very blessed on this channel to have an opportunity to review decks often enough that I feel like I get the opportunity to preview some things before they're out, which is already a huge blessing. That's already something that I'm really, really grateful for. But I guess maybe because of that, or maybe just because I've slowed my roll a bit in general, I don't feel like I need to be first in line. So I'm not very eager to pre-order decks unless I'm fairly confident. I would say unless I'm fairly confident that it is a creator that I already know, whose work I already know, who I know I love and appreciate that type of work. The, the deck that comes to mind right off the top of my, my bat, <laughs> the deck that comes to mind or comes to my mind right off the bat, that's what I was gonna say, is actually the Seasons of the Witch Yule deck, which this this one I'm not anti-hauling. I'm saying that's an example of one that I'm happy to pre-order. I haven't yet, but I plan to. <laughs> that's one I'm happy to pre-order because I already have another deck in that series, the Seasons of the Witch Samhain Oracle. I know and love that deck. So I know I will know, I know I will love and enjoy the Yule deck, even if it's just for the season. So that's an easy yes, but most decks I find are a lot harder for me to say yes to when it comes to pre-ordering because I wanna know what the card stock's gonna be like, I wanna know what the cards are gonna be like, and I'm, as I said, just a little slower these days. So there are a few in this category. The first one I wanna talk about actually came up in one of our Helping You Say Yes to the Deck episodes. It was the Winter Seer Oracle deck by Ciolo Thompson, creator of the Lion Strider Tarot and the Scrying Ink Lenormand. I had to really think about that. I had to work for that, but I remembered. Anyway, 
this is the first of Ciolo Thompson's decks I think I've actually been like, oh, do I need that? I think I might need that. I do struggle a bit with white space in decks, but this one, there was something about it, the, the sort of splotchy watercolor that was actually pulling me in instead of pushing me away. A lot of times too much white space or too much splotchiness in the artwork kind of pushes me away. I don't know why, it's just my own aesthetic, I guess, or my own personal taste. But this one's so elegantly done and it's so, so pretty, but, the more that I looked at it, the more that I considered whether or not this was one that I wanted to buy, the more I remember that I have a deck like this in my collection already. Uh, and it is the When My Soul Whispered Oracle deck. Um, this deck, oh my gosh. So Melissa Salvaggio. This deck by Melissa Salvaggio. I have the original um, Kickstarter edition of this deck. It is so beautiful. It's got all of that gorgeous white space. It's got the splotchiness in the artwork, but not too much. But it goes just that little step further. This little deck also has some really conscious choice of color used in the deck. I don't know if uh, if Ciolo Thompson's deck does too, but I know that in Melissa's deck, she consciously worked in chakra colors to each of these cards to sort of pull in those elements to the meaning of them. There are also uh, seven chakra cards in the deck, but this is one of those animal decks that just goes a step further for me personally. The keywords are spot on. And I actually really prefer animal and nature-based oracle decks that if they're going to name what is on the card from a, and I do like that, like I would like if all of the cards say exactly what's on them, but if they're going to do that, I also want a keyword, at least one, preferably more than one. Um, but this When My Soul Whisper deck is absolutely beautiful. The, as I mentioned, the copy that I have is an independent published copy. It was a Kickstarter copy, but this deck is actually currently in pre-order status as well as a mass market deck through, I believe, US Games. I'll try to have a link to that down below. So if you're intrigued by this one that you can scoop it up because this is such a beautiful deck and I love it so much. I do reach for it quite a lot in my collection. So I realized I don't really need the Winter Seer I, Oracle deck, the animal one, because I have something very much like that that still has that beautiful white space that still pulls me in, uh, but it has the perfect mix of animals for me personally. It has like, I, it has a unicorn and a ladybug. If anybody's ever heard me talk about animal oracle decks, that's one of my preferences is that it has a unicorn and a ladybug, which is a tall order because a unicorn is a mythical creature and a ladybug is a bug. So not all animal decks are gonna have those two, but the ones that do tend to win me over. But so yeah, I just, I don't need it. I don't need it, but I thought about it. I thought about it seriously. This next one is online in pre-order status, but I saw it physically on the shelf as available to purchase. So maybe I have this in the wrong category, if so I apologize. Maybe it's available right now. But it looked like on Amazon at least it was in pre-order and it is the Prism Oracle. I held a physical copy of this deck. It was, it was sealed so I couldn't flip through the cards. Probably a good thing because I managed to walk away and not purchase it. <clears throat> this is really intriguing to me because for mass market, this looks very different than what we typically see. And that excites me. It always excites me when mass market publishers put out things that we're not used to seeing, that we don't see as much of, because it means they're shaking things up. And I always like that. Even if it's not something that I personally am gonna use, I like it when we see less homogeny, I guess you could say, in the divination world. So this one excited me. It excited me that it was called Prism. It looks like there are cards for all these different colors. I was pretty excited about this. I'm not gonna lie, but there was something about it. I was like, I, I have things that are similar to this. And there was actually two decks that came to mind for me. The first of those was the Color Mage Oracle. I don't think you can get this anymore. So I do have another one to share as well, but the Color Mage Oracle, um, I've been using this a lot in my chakra client readings. It's been the main one I've been reaching for lately, but it seems really boring. I know people have said you could totally make something like this yourself. You can. Um, I think it was Dustin and there's been at least one other person I think that said you could literally go to the paint store and buy paint chips and put keywords on them. And I completely agree, you could do that. But there's something so thoughtful about this particular system. It, the fact that the keywords and the cards and the color names and everything seems to associate so beautifully with the chakra system that I personally work with. Um, and it just feels cohesive as a system. And it's such a meaty, chunky deck. It has so many cards. I really enjoy working with this one. Um, unlike the Prism Oracle though, this doesn't have any kind of sigils on it. It's just color on cards. Um, and again, I don't think you can get this one anymore. The other deck that I was thinking about was, and this is probably closer if I'm being honest, although the colors are not so, I think, specifically chosen. And that is the Sacred Creators Oracle by Chris Ann Donnelly. 
this deck is really beautiful and I love the mass market version. I never had the indie version. Um, but this is also really beautiful. It has some sigil type things on it. It also has these beautiful messages that immediately sort of tie in the meaning of the card in this really fantastic way that just has it hit exactly as it needs to hit. And with this deck, you also get all these beautiful, vibrant colors, sort of minimalist art that's not too distracting. It pairs well with a lot of things, just like I imagine the Prism Oracle would. So I'm like, I don't need, I don't need the Prism Oracle. I have two decks that are both kind of minimalist, have lots of color, pair well with lots of things, and I think give me that same kind of vibe. So I was like, I don't need, I don't need the Prism Oracle, but it's cool. And it was really affordable, so it might be one worth checking out. Okay, that brings me to the last one that I've decided I'm not going to pre-order, and this one is called the Jack-O-Lantern Tarot. I am a sucker, I'm a sucker, for a good Halloween time of year based deck, because it's like, it's just a great witchy time of year, it's a great tarot time of year, and so witchy, Halloween-y, witchy halloween -y decks just kind of get me excited, right? Because it's just, it's just a fun theme to play with, but... I don't need it because I do have, I have, I have like the perfect number right now of decks that I feel like are kind of Halloween time themed. I have the, like a really nice classic, cute, fun tarot called the Halloween tarot. This is the one in the tin and it's by Kipling West. There is a full size version. I didn't bother with the full size version because I'm a sucker for these little tin sized decks, but also because I know I'm not going to use it much. I won't use it outside of the Halloween season. I'm never going to pull out the Halloween tarot in like April. I know myself. I, I definitely box this deck into its season, but it's so stinking adorable with its little ghosts and imps and pumpkins. And there's one other suit that I totally forgot. Ghosts, imps, pumpkins, bats. That's the other suit, bats. This deck is so stinking cute and it's perfect that it's in a little tin. I could totally like take it with me to a Halloween party or something. Do we do those anymore? Are Halloween parties ever gonna be a thing again? I can't remember the last time I went to one. It's not like I'm not going to Halloween parties just because of like the pandorama that we're we've been dealing with. But like, also it seems like a long time. It's just like, the, are they ever gonna happen again? I don't know, who knows? I miss trick or treating, side, side rant, side tangent. Does anybody else miss, miss trick or treating? I do. I feel like I can't trick or treat as an adult. It's not, it's not okay. Gotta leave that to the kids, but I kind of miss it. Also, that's a lot of sugar. Also, is it Halloween yet? Cause I feel like I'm kind of wistful for that time of year. Anyways, I love this little Halloween tarot. It's so cute. And yeah, I don't need to get the jack o tarot, but it, that was pretty, that one's pretty nice looking. If you were thinking about a Halloween themed deck and you don't already have another Halloween themed deck and you, or you want more than one, maybe check it out. It looks, it looks kind of fun. <sighs> okay, so that wraps up most of our categories, but we have one category remaining, and this is the category that I struggled the most with this time, and it is Kickstarters that I'm not, that I didn't back, that I did not back, that the window has closed on, I think, or has almost closed on, and I've managed to not back it. <laughs> this category is usually really easy for me because I pass up a lot of things on Kickstarter, but this past couple of months there have been like several things that have won me over so um that was like a very kind of busy kickstarter couple of months for me compared to what it has been for a while now and yeah so i said yes to a lot of things on kickstarter i backed the phantom tarot the um ocean tarot that i already talked about uh there the entanglement tarot which was super cool if you haven't seen that one yet um, I, just, I backed a lot of things. So to find some that have been somewhat recent that I also haven't backed, that I also kind of wanted to back or thought about backing, that was harder because <laughs> I said yes to myself a lot. Maybe because my birthday was coming up. That's the excuse I'll use. Yep, sounds valid. Anyway, one of those was the Alchemistical Tarot. Oh my gosh, this deck is so pretty. I think this deck is gorgeous. I also kind of, I was like this close and then I was like, wait, at least you have this. I don't have it, but I have something that gives me the same vibes and it's the gorgeous Star Child Tarot. Oh, Danielle Noel's artwork is so beautiful. And I, I've had this deck now twice, the Star Child Tarot. I had the um, Star Child Tarot Akashic Edition, which I ended up trading. It was the borderless or mostly borderless version. Um, and then Danielle Noel, I ended up trading that. I didn't get on with it, but then she reprinted the first edition of the Star Child Tarot. 
And man, I just, I really loved this edition. There was a few cards in the Akashic that I just didn't get on with that are not in this original reprint. And there's something sort of more, it just lands better for me. I think the colors are a little bit more varied in the first edition reprint than they are in the Akashic, which has that very heavy pink purple overlay, which I thought I really wanted. But then when, once I had it, I was like, oh, I kind of miss the more vibrant colors of, of other decks. You know what I mean? If it's too homogenous, it's not as fun for me to work with. So I really like this first edition and it has a very similar vibe to me as the Alchemistical Tarot. They are very different decks. Don't get me wrong. Lots of different art choices obviously were made, but um, I feel like when it comes to that style of deck, I'm covered with the Star Child and really the Moon Child, but I feel like the colors and the style in the Star Child Tarot was closer to the Alchemistical than the Moon Child, which has a warmer, more golden tone to it. But yeah, pretty deck definitely decided not to back it. <laughs> and the last one I want to talk about, this was one that I got all up on the hype train for. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so incredible. It's an incredible project. I need it. Of course I need it. Why? I'm, I like tarot. Why wouldn't I get it? And then I was like, but I'm not going to use it. And that was what made me realize I shouldn't back it. Um, the project was fully funded in like a ridiculous short amount of time. They didn't need me to back it for the project to be successful or anything like that. And I didn't need the deck. I knew I wouldn't use it but it is incredible and it is the literary tarot. Um, I'm sure you're gonna be seeing and hearing a lot about this deck once it's in people's hands because it is. it just looks to be incredibly well done. The, the incredible amount of coordination it must have taken to put this deck together just blows my mind. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of, of infamous authors and people that we know within either the tarot community or the literary community that have come together to pair classic works of, of fiction or of literature with individual tarot cards. It's incredible. It's an incredible project. It's very exciting. I have read some classic literature, but not nearly enough to understand, appreciate, or enjoy the references in this deck. The, the ones that I know well, I would geek out on like crazy. But if I didn't know them all well, it would frustrate me as a deck. And in my lifetime, I just don't think it's I don't think it's something I want to take on. I know what I would do. This is what I guess I'm trying to say. I would want to read all of the books that the cards reference so that I understood all the references. And that is a really big project that I know I don't have time for. I, I know it and I know I wouldn't do it, right? It's like picking up a crystal deck and you wanna have one of the crystals of every crystal in the deck. It's like in theory, that sounds like a great idea, but like in practice, it's either really expensive or really time consuming to do that and very impractical. And I'm the kind of person that if I'm going to have a deck with all of those references, I want to understand the references. It's the main reason why I haven't bought the Golden Girls Tarot, even though I love the Golden Girls Tarot. I've lived, or the Golden Girls Show. I lived for the Golden Girls in high school. I watched a bazillion episodes. It was one of my favorite shows to talk about and watch with my best friend. And it means so much to me, that show, but I don't know it well enough, especially having so much time has passed for me to really understand all of the references in the Golden Girls Tarot. Same thing with Friends. I loved Friends. I didn't buy the Friends Tarot. Um, there's been movie tarots and other de decks that have come out that I've been like, I want to, but if I don't know all the references really well, it's going to frustrate me as a deck. Or I'm going to feel like I need to like study the subject matter to understand the references better or to remember them better. And I just, I don't have time for a project. <laughs> but <laughs> there is a deck that I own that relies on those kinds of like references that I know really, really, really well because the thing it references is so near and dear to my heart and that is my last Unicorn Tarot, which was probably my most unpleasant and longest lasting Kickstarter experience I ever had, but was actually in the end worth it. There was not a single corner cut in the production of this deck in Kickstarter. It's stunningly gorgeous. The commemorative box that the decks came in, the beautiful faux leather bound guidebook that came with the decks, but most importantly, the deck itself just is, every reference makes sense to me. Even if I don't always agree 100,000% with the choice made in the card, I understand the choice made in every single situation. There's not one of these cards that I pull that I'm like, nope, doesn't connect at all to the tarot. And I think that's because the artists that worked on this deck, and there were multiple, but the art style is very cohesive. The artists that worked on this deck were fans of this show, of this movie. And so The Last Unicorn Tarot is the one for me when it comes to pop culture decks, reference decks. The other one I would say that I get 
almost as much from is the Game of Thrones tarot, which I didn't show but or bring to show. But the Game of Thrones tarot also is one that I feel like I know well enough to get a lot out of. But for me, that's what it is. For pop culture decks, for me, I really just need to know the subject matter well enough for it to for me to know that none of the references will be lost on me, that I will get it. And with the literary tarot, I'm just not, I'm just not well read enough uh, on classic literature to get what I need out of that deck. That said, I hope that deck or a copy of that deck ends up in a museum somewhere someday because I think it's an incredible collaboration of classic literature and the world of tarot. And I, th I think it's such a cool way to maybe even learn about 78 different pieces of classic literature to learn a little bit about tarot if you already know classic literature really 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 well like there's a cool crossover there that really excited me but backing the deck or buying the deck for me personally would have just been a splurge that didn't have a lot of substance behind it for my own personal use it would have literally just been a collector's item and as much as we i know that i joke and peggy teases me on this channel about the fact that i collect i don't like to collect things that I don't use. It just doesn't feel good to me. I don't mind holding on to things if I use them only once in a while, but I have to feel like I've got, I can use them. Otherwise it just feels like an object that has no personal connection to me. And that doesn't feel good. It makes me feel overloaded. And that's, that's, that's where my sort of healthy balance, that's the, that's the kind of balance I try to strike, I guess, is I don't mind having a lot of things, but I want those things to be things that I want to reach for, use and play with and work with, not just be things that sit there. I will make the occasional exception for something that's that has meaning for me in a certain way, but for the most part, I just want to feel like I can use things, you know? So that's why I end up decluttering, that's why I end up anti-hauling is because I just want things to to have use, to have a purpose in my in my home, in my space, in my life. So Whew, that was a lot of decks and a lot of information to share, but I hope that you guys got what you needed out of this video. I love making these. I try to make one every couple of months at the very, very least. So stay tuned for the next one for sure. If you enjoy hearing me talk about my process and deciding what to buy, what not to buy, you'd probably also really enjoy my Say Yes to the Deck series, where I kind of bring you along with me as I make my purchasing decisions. Or even more recently, I've been occasionally doing these videos with other people, viewers of the channel who we invite on and Peggy and I help them decide what deck they're going to buy. Uh, and it's really fun to kind of bring you along for that process. If you're also trying to keep a curated collection, you might also like the This or That series where I share with you every once in a while when I have a few decks where I can pair them up head to head and be like, do I want this one or this one in my collection? Like which one's going to stay and which one's going to go? So if you like that kind of stuff, I do like to do that sort of thing on this channel fairly regularly. I find it makes a nice balance to the more consumerist side of this world, which I do personally love and enjoy a great deal. I love showing new decks. I love reviewing new decks. I like introducing new decks to you guys, but I also like showing that other side of like keeping things curated and being mindful and, and not overloading yourself just for the sake of overloading yourself. If it feels good to you, do it. And if it doesn't, don't. That's kind of my motto. So um, if you like that kind of content and you enjoyed this video, then definitely stick around, hit the subscribe button, click like on the video if you enjoyed this and you found value in it. Uh, and I think that's all I got for you for now. As always, I really, really enjoy and appreciate the fact that you take your time watching this video. It means so much. This would not be at all fun for me to do without you guys watching and participating. So thank you so, so much for that. And if you don't already know, I do now have a channel membership option for those of you who want even more content from me. You can click the little join button down below or there's a link in the description box if you wanna sign up and be a member of the Unicorn Fam. Thank you to all those of you who are already in the Unicorn Family. We are having a blast in there. And I think that's, that, that's now for sure all I've got for you. All right, I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you so, so much. And may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye guys. Awesome. Had to check that my mic was still on. Paranoid about that. I'm always worried I'm going to make make a video and like my mic's going to be off like halfway through and I'm going to lose all that audio. So I, I'm a worrier. What can I say? Because I love me a good cutesy fluffy duck deck. <laughs> I said duck, I think.